This week, start your Sunday with Fox NFL kickoff and America's number one pregame show. Then Kirk Cousins and the Redskins battle Carson Wentz and the Eagles. And in America's Game of the Week, Russell Wilson and the Seahawks collide with Aaron Rodgers and the Packers or other regional action. Coverage begins Sunday at 11 Eastern on Fox. Welcome back into Drennan Live here on Sports Time Ohio. We are joined now by Ryan Fowler of FoxSports.com, our fantasy football expert that we have each week right here on Drennan Live. You can follow him at Fox Sports Fowler. And I know we have a, a lot of fan questions for you today because, Ryan, so exciting. The playoffs are finally here. So maybe we'll start off with your best advice for everyone. Kind of generalize best advice for playoffs. Yeah. Well, you know, there's an old adage that you play your studs in the fantasy football playoffs, and I don't know if that's necessarily true this year. I mean, we've seen a lot of ebbs and flows of guys like Allen Robinson and DeAndre Hopkins. They're not always the best guy to play. So I think you have to be careful with uh, going with that adage of play your studs, play your studs. A lot of people are banged up. A lot of Here's a great example of Sean McCoy up there in Buffalo having a heck of a year. So is Mike Gillisley. Mike Gillisley only has three more, three fewer touchdowns than Sean McCoy. Nobody talks about Mike Gillisley. So I think there's ways that you can find guys that aren't household names and squeeze them into your lineup. You just have to be smart about the matchup. All right. So we have a lot of questions for you and, you know, different matchups, a lot going on and win or go home time here, Ryan. So we're hoping your advice is going to help them out. And we'll start off with some Twitter questions. And the first comes from at Rick Kelly 78 wants to know, in your opinion, the better option this week, Inman or Steve Smith? Well, I think you have two different scenarios there. I think when you look at Dontrell Inman, he's still in the mix with Tyrell Williams. Uh, Travis Benjamin has come back. And, of course, we have Antonio Gates, who hasn't seen as many targets in recent weeks. It's kind of weird. He was averaging nine targets per game uh, in October and only four over the last two games. So I think Inman's a good option in standard scoring leagues because you're not looking at a volume of targets. Uh, Panthers defense, not that great. Steve Smith, on the other hand, I think Joe Flacco is going to have to throw the ball a bunch to hang with the Patriots this weekend. So I think if you're in a PPR league, Steve Smith is where I give the slight edge there. If you're in a standard scoring league, Dontrell Inman, a lot of upside there. But again, he is in the mix with a lot of receivers that Phillip Rivers likes to target. Next, another Twitter question comes from at Cleveland Jeff and a better option this week at running back. Would you play Hyde or Ajayi? Yeah, I mean, I think Jay Ajayi is, is one of those guys that was a breakout. You look back to week one, he got left at home when Miami went to Seattle, and then he's a breakout candidate. Carlos Hyde, he's got the Jets this week. Jets rush defense, pretty good. And he's, they, for as bad as they were on Monday night, they slowed down Frank Gore. So I think I'd pump the brakes on Carlos Hyde. Look at the volume that Jay's going to get against Arizona. I know it's a good defense, but I think it is very close. You can see our rankings at foxsports.com slash fantasy to show, see how close they are. But I give the edge to Jay in that matchup because Colin Kaepernick still starting for the 49ers. He can pick up 50, 60 yards on his own. And I think last week was a fluke when he laid an egg against the Bears. And you guys update those standings a couple times a week, right, on foxsports.com slash fantasy. You can go there and see, right. you know, updated stats on everybody. Correct. So, yeah, every Wednesday and then Saturday night we update it after injury updates come out. Perfect. All right. Theodore Atwell has a question, his flex spot, and wants to know if you think he should play LeGarrette Blunt or Golden Tate. Again, this goes back to a standard versus PPR type format. Detroit really rolling right now. They get the Bears bad pass defense. So in PPR, Golden Tate has been in the mix, but I don't know if he's been that dominant that you can say, okay, I'm going to roll the dice on Golden Tate against the Bears. When you know LeGarrette Blunt is probably going to get 20 touches out of that backfield, Deion Lewis, James White, they really haven't taken the reins and said, okay, we're going to push Blunt out of the way. Now with Gronk out for the Patriots, they might lean on the running game a little bit more. I mean, it's close, but in standard scoring leagues, I definitely go Blunt. In PPR, it's closer Still a slight edge to Blunt, only because I think he's going to touch the ball a little bit more. I, I love Stafford. Stafford has been amazing for the Lions. It's just Anquan Bolden, Eric Ebron. Stafford isn't really that partial to Golden Tate like he was last year. So it's really hard to say. I know for a fact, because I can't see the future, but I know for a fact that he's going to get 10 targets in that game. It's just impossible to know because Anquan Bolden's been in the mix as I fix my earpiece as I give you this advice, live television. Um, you know, I just really think that Golden Tate is a little bit riskier of an investment than LeGarrette Blount. You mentioned Gronk, and last week we talked about, you know, replacements for him, what you're going to do um, at the tight end spot. So Ken wants to know if you think that Zach Ertz this week is a good play. 
Absolutely. I mean, if there's anybody that Carson Wentz has trusted, and I know it's not been that pretty after the first three weeks, but Zach Ertz in a PPR league has been a monster. I actually picked him up about midway through the season when he was a little banged up, and then I've been streaming him in there and been pretty happy with the, uh, the outcome. Now, if you're in a standard scoring league, yeah, there's not a lot of touchdowns there, but Ertz and, and Wentz have been struggling. Um, but I, I think when you look at the top tight ends in this league, Ertz falls in the top eight, so I'm a big fan of his, especially against the Redskins. Okay, QB question comes from Alan France. Drew Brees or Jameis Winston? Drew Brees, without question. I know a lot of people get nervous with Drew Brees on the road against Tampa Bay. Uh, Drew Brees not the best road quarterback. But, uh, and the other reason is Tampa Bay slowed down Seattle two weeks ago. They slowed down the Chargers last week. But, again, Drew Brees needs a bounce-back game from that Lions catastrophe. And it, Jameis is going to have a good game. But Drew Brees, he's done it longer. I give him the benefit of the doubt. Um, and again, if you look at our rankings at Fox Sports, every single one of the contributors has Drew Brees ranked number one this week at QB. Okay, two more QB ones here. Uh, Mike Bachman says Jameis or Eli. That one's closer. You know, I think it comes down to a trust issue. I think Eli Manning, a lot of people were gaining trust in him, and then Eli goes to Pittsburgh and everybody loses trust in him, right? And he still came back and had a little bit of a backdoor cover, if you will, on fantasy points score towards the end of that game, hovered around 20 points. Dallas, I'm a little nervous about that matchup. I think there's a lot on the line there. I think Eli steps up. But I think as far as points ceiling goes, as far as reaching another ceiling, I mean, New Orleans' pass defense is really bad. Jameis has been in a little bit of a groove. Mike Evans could have a big game. I give the slight edge to Jameis in that home game over Eli. But, again, it's like QB 12 versus QB 13, and you can look, again, at the rankings at foxsports.com slash fantasy. These are very close uh, rankings in, in pecking order. And it comes down to, do you want Eli's veteran leadership? Do you want Jameis in the better matchup because the Saints defense stinks? I give Jameis a slight edge in that. All right, Karen Lewis then asks Stafford or Ryan. That's a good one. Ryan on the road against the Rams, Stafford at home against the Bears. I'm going to give the edge to Stafford in that one only because the, the Bears pass defense is pretty bad. And if you've looked at the stats that Stafford has been able to put up over the last couple seasons. I mean, when you expand that sample size, not just concentrating on 2016, he's really been locked in. Look for Eric Ebron to have a nice game against the Bears this weekend. Matt Ryan, I know he has Julio Jones. He's a little dinged up. We're wait and see mode on him right now. Um, but Taylor Gabriel broke out a little bit. Mohamed Sanu. It's just they can win with Devonta Freeman and Tevin Coleman. They don't need Matt Ryan to win the game for him. Again, you're talking about two top five quarterbacks in the league this week as far as fantasy terms. I think Stafford gets the slight edge there. Last QB question for you comes from Patrick McAllen. Should he start Derek Carr over Cam Newton? I say yes. Cam Newton is just, I, I don't know what's going on with Carolina. I mean, you look at what they did last year, and now it's kind of a, a tale of two cities there. Derek Carr, I know he's got the Chiefs, but you can pick on that uh, second cornerback of the Chiefs. You got Eric Berry lurking back there, and you got obviously a defensive line that can put some pressure on you. But the Raiders are averaging 30 points per game. I know it's a Thursday game. I know some of those games can turn ugly. But Cam Newton hasn't really shown anything in recent weeks. And San Diego's defense isn't too bad. Uh, when you take a look, again, I know I keep pushing everybody to the website, but look at the rankings at Fox Sports. Cam has been really pushed down to that 18 to 20 range. I mean, he's not really in the conversation where Derek Carr, because they are averaging about 30 points per game over the last five, six weeks, he's going to get the edge. Talking with Ryan Fowler of FoxSports.com. You can follow him at Fox Sports Fowler. And I feel like the Cleveland Browns just keep coming up with you. And I know, you know, <laughs> we always talk about this. And RG3 now the starter. So that, once again, changes things up. So Jess wants to know, is there any Cleveland Browns that are worth a start? Well, I mean, Terrell Pryor is going to kind of be the beginning and end of that. I, I know... Cincinnati is it's your rival and, and everything like that. But, I mean, when you have a variable change, we don't know. I mean, we haven't seen RG3 in so long, and we didn't see much of him uh, to begin with. So, I mean, Terrell Pryor, I guess he would kind of lead the way. Uh, I just I think it's week 14, and it's fantasy football playoffs, and putting your faith in a QB change in that offense, I think it's risky business. Plus, the Bengals' defense played pretty well last weekend. So, Mike Guzzo then says um, Terrell Pryor or Hopkins? I give Hopkins the edge here. I, I, know, it's, I know it's been a rough year. Um, Hopkins scored a touchdown last week. They have the Colts pass defense this week. I really think Hopkins can come up uh, with a bigger game than a lot of people expect. I know Brock Osweiler isn't wowing the world, but Lamar Miller's a little banged up. Uh, look, for, uh, look for Brock to air it out to DeAndre. I think he has one of his best games of the year this weekend. 
All right, Angelo Christopher says he needs one, please, for his flex spot in a PPR league. So he gives you these choices. Matthews, Devontae Adams, Randall Cobb, Darren Sproles, Marcellus Bennett. Well, let's take Sproles out of the equation. And then you mentioned two Packers. So there's something that's interesting. Against Seattle, uh, Jordy Nelson's always in that conversation. When you talk about Jordy, Devontae Adams, and Cobb, Jordy's in the top 10, and then Cobb and Devontae Adams, when I rank them, it's literally back-to-back -back because either one of those guys are a threat to score a touchdown on any, any given week, and you have to look at the matchup. I mean, it's Seattle, and after you get past Sherman, I mean, it's a little bit weaker, so you can like that matchup. Uh, I'm not sure what Matthews are talking about. You have Richard and you have Jordan. Richard, uh, I like sorry, Richard yes. Matthews this week. It's I mean, there's a million. Name that Matthews, right? There's a lot of Matthews. It could be Ryan Matthews for, for the flex. Um, but I'm leaning towards Devontae Adams in that conversation. I think uh, against Seattle's uh, weaker DBs and they, they, Earl Thomas got banged up last week, I think I'm going to give the edge to uh, Devontae in that matchup. All right, Derek, up next, Jeremy Hill or Latavius Murray, also Cameron Brait or Delaney Walker? Delaney Walker, and then this is a good one, Jeremy Hill against the Browns rush defense and Latavius Murray, who's been on fire the last month against Kansas City. I'm going to give the edge to Latavius Murray. I think the Browns coming out of the bye play a little bit better. So Latavius Murray, short week, I really think he can kind of gash some of those uh, Chiefs rush defenses. And, again, if anybody's going to get a, red, a, a goal line uh, carry, it's going to be Latavius Murray for the Raiders. Uh, I give him the edge. Okay, Mike Wilmeth would like to know if you think he should start Julio Jones or bench due to injury and go with, instead then, Landry or Snead. Yikes. Um, <laughs> so there's two parts to this. Uh, Julio Jones, we don't know if he's if he's active, you're going to start him because they're not going to throw Julio Jones out there at less than where he can't compete or be a decoy. I think they're going to put him out there. I mean, this is what we've dealt with Julio his entire career. If he's out there, I think you have to start him. And this isn't go back to play your studs mantra. It's just I think Atlanta's smart enough to know if Julio is healthy enough to be active, they're going to get him involved. Plus, your other two options are a little dicey. Jarvis Landry, absolutely not. Willie Sneed could become interesting uh, if, let's just say, Julio misses the game. Sneed could start over Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas of the Saints is also banged up. He missed practice on Thursday. So keep an eye on that if you need to stream Sneed in there uh, against the Buccaneers. All right, let's see. We have Adam. Are you playing, are you playing Tyreek Hill now that Macklin is back? He's in the flex realm now. I think with Macklin's return and Spencer Ware having a good matchup against the Raiders' rush defense, Tyreek Hill, if you look at our rankings, RB, I'm sorry, wide receiver 30 to wide receiver 36. So he's in that flex range. He's on the back end of those flex wide receivers. I think I would pass. It wouldn't surprise me if he had a nice game, but he's not going to have that monster game that he had a couple weeks ago. Last one. And I played last week this person who had Jordan Howard, so I got crushed. So after a three-touchdown week, is Jordan Howard I must start against a better Lions D this week? Yeah, you have to keep in mind Jordan Howard, the three touchdowns came against the 49ers, the worst rush defense, and they allow oodles of fantasy points to uh, opposing running backs. But here's the thing. It's a volume thing where you look at how much volume and how many touches – Jordan Howard's going to get over the course of a game against the Lions. He's got to be in that RB2 slot. Uh, and I think if you're benching him, you have a much better team than a, a lot of people uh, right now because Jordan Howard, he's among the most uh, reliable running backs right now in that week in and week out, he gets about the same amount of work. So Jordan Howard, he's probably going to start in most instances. All right, Ryan, thanks for all the great advice. It is win or go home. So big, big week here in the playoffs, fantasy football. We um, look forward to talking to you again. And again, we can go to foxsports.com slash fantasy, all the updated rankings with you guys. So thanks for joining us here on Jordan Live. You got it, Ashley. All right, stick around here on Sports Time Ohio. Coming up next is Phil Steele. You don't want to miss it. That's next right here on Drennan Live.